Is Tony Soprano dead or alive? Uh, I think David Chase said he's not dead. He did? Yeah, I think so. I thought he said he left it perfectly clear or something. And that was all he said. He did say that? I think so. So then what is that ending about? Everybody's here has seen it, right? The finale? Okay, I assume. Although I never heard I don't know. I mean, I forget what the hell he's you know, supposed to. I guess it's uncertainty, you know, like life. And you know what I mean? We don't know anything what's going to happen when we walk out. Of, well, you know, when we walk out of here this afternoon or in the next minute, and um, the uh, the uncertainty of life, the uh, impermanence. Um, David Chase is never someone who necessarily tied things up in a knot, you know, in a mm -hmm. bow, and, and, and with, with a lot of closure. There were a lot of open-ended things. Yeah. Particularly um, when Lorraine, Rocco's character, was raped, everyone thought, well, Tony's going to get revenge, because somehow the audience wanted that. But, you know, life doesn't always offer those clear-cut, right. you know, cause and effect. You know, sometimes it's, you know, Things are different. Yeah. You know, things play out in ways that you don't expect, or things just fade away. Like, how many things happened years ago that you worried about, and years later you're like, really? You know, we worried about the consequences and nothing really happened? Well, what were you very worried about a long time ago that now you're I realizing? wouldn't talk about it. Oh, come on. No, that's it's way me, too Michael. personal. It's me. I wouldn't tell anybody. Okay. I accept. Um, I'm, let me just tell you about something I did read about that finale. It was one person's theory that, ready for this, um, that basically when it went faded to black, or was that the term faded to black? Cut to black? I think it just... Cut to black. Cut to black. Cut to black. Cut to black. Yeah, it didn't fade. It was like um, a very abrupt... Right. I think somebody had a theory that the viewer got whacked. That here we were yeah. watching all this. We're one of them. We're in right. there. And then boom, now you don't see anything right, anymore. Right, I guess. And that's that. Like, that's a good theory. I know, that was pretty interesting. So your network show now, totally different from The Sopranos. Lincoln Rhyme premieres Friday, and you're digging it, right? It's good to be on. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. Why do you like it? It's different, it's like totally different. Um, I, just, I like the character, I like the material, I like the people I work with, mm -hmm. the whole experience, you know, the crew, and the, I like the routine of work, you know, I like the um, discipline of it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So what about, it was really the Sopranos though that you did like, I know, I remember you telling me that another time, that you loved that whole camaraderie. Well, class. I knew a lot of those actors yeah. from before, most of them I knew, Plus, I'd say. you were learning a lot from David Chase, right? You loved that. Yeah, without a doubt. But, but it was, um, you know, like I said, I knew most of those actors, so it was, you know, and uh, we were all kind of in a similar position in a way, maybe except for Lorraine, really who had already been nominated for an Oscar and stuff, but everyone else was kind of in the same boat career-wise, done work, done some good work, and some success, some people knew us, but so it all happened to all of us at the same I knew Edie for a lot of years before that, you know, we were friends, I knew Sirico, Vinnie Pastor, and Chapentamilia and Sharon, and uh, Dominic a little bit, a lot of people. Yeah, but you, I think you told me last time, or one time that we talked, that it was kind of like boys club a little bit, in the sense that you guys all hung out together, but not so much Edie, right? Or was it just a small group of people? You're not boys club, but... Yeah, it was definitely it a boys club. It was definitely a boys club? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. We would go out a lot after work. And, and do what? Tear up the town. <laughs> Drink a lot go? of alcohol and eat a lot of food. And, oh, we had our haunts. Such as? You no. Know, um, Il Cortile in Little Italy, we used to hang out at Pastis a lot, which is closed. That was in the meatpacking district. Um, I actually owned a place at the time. We used to hang out there. Um, uh, Peter's on the Upper West Side, which I don't think is there anymore. Maybe it is. I don't know. So who are we talking about here? Me, Sharipa, Jim, Genolfini, John Bertamilia. 
sometimes Sirico, Steven Zant. But never a girl. Not much. Okay. No, not 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 because we excluded people, but often it was like we were done shooting them to go out, you know. Mm -hmm. And so Jim was really an incredible person, right? This is what I've heard. Yeah, he like was. Beyond. He was a really good actor and a really good friend and generous guy, you know. You know, um, uh, he was very interesting because he he was very supportive of the troops and went to Iraq and visited the troops there and. We went to Walter Reed to the, the the military hospital and met a lot of you know people who had been horribly injured in the Middle East and stuff. Yet he was a liberal. He wasn't a Republican by any stretch of the imagination. So those you know that kind of um, you know dichotomy was really it's very cool. He was like a hippie almost, but he he. You know, he um, had a lot of respect for people in the military, and I think that I think that was a really special point of view. You know, I think a lot of people confuse. I bet a lot of fans think he was he'd probably be like a Trump fan or something, or very right wing, um, because of Tony Soprano. You know, but he was he wasn't very much like Tony Soprano. Well, it's called acting for a reason. Yeah, but you'd be surprised. People want to relate to him, especially now that he's gone, relate to him as whatever they perceive him as, not as who he really was. Oh, know? so you think a lot of Sopranos fans are like maybe thinking that they relate to him as... Without a doubt. Uh, Without a doubt, uh -huh. yeah. Well, it's like how they think that you were like plucked from a mall in New Jersey, right? Probably, yeah. Which is obviously not... No, none of us really mm -hmm, were. Mm -hmm. no. Right, but people do, I think that's true. They project. I mean, you're seeing somebody on the screen, especially if it's a TV, you see it week after week, or now I guess you scream it all the No, months. it's understandable. Yeah. yeah. So do you get recognized a lot still? All the time, yeah. All like walking on the street? Yeah. What do they all do? All the time. <laughs> Depends on the person. <laughs> they do all different things. <laughs> Examples. Oh, I was saying hello, want a picture, get surprised. I don't know. Some people are nice. Some people are not so nice. You know? They call you Christopher. Sometimes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Most people know my name. Uh, who say hello. Yeah. So what do you do about the pictures? Is that like okay, sure? Yeah. I mean, if it, unless it's you know, if I'm with my family, I don't like taking pictures with people. Mm -hmm. If I'm by myself, I don't really mind it unless I'm busy. So your family. So I know a little bit about your family from a few things that you told me over the years, but not that much. So let's see, you were uh, basically stalking your wife when you first met her. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> stalking works sometimes. <laughs> and it's uh, welcome sometimes. If it's done right. Uh -huh. And the intention is true, I guess. I don't know. That's the truth. 